If you were looking for a show to show a casual fan or somebody that's never watched wrestling, this event, this show, this pay-per-view to explain what WCW was, I present to you Road Wild 1998 and say this, this is WCW. The good and especially the bad. They had this awesome, unique venue and set up there in Sturgis, South Dakota. But of course, they scheduled an event in Sturgis during the rally week because of Eric Bischoff basically wanting to go to fucking Sturgis and ride his goddamn motorcycle. You got this venue, this setup at a place where you're going to have literally over a quarter million bikers there. So you set up a venue where you don't charge the fans to get in because that's buku business brilliance. You've got all of these big name stars of the past and the present, yet so many of the matches are shit. So many of the booking decisions are perplexing to flat out shit. You've got a big time name involved from the mainstream like Jay Leno. Like, you could laugh about that in 2023. But in 1998, Leno was the king of late night. Furthermore, not only was he the king of late night, but goddamn, they did an invasion angle of the ten fucking Tonight Show with the members of the NWO like Hogan and Bischoff. They had Hogan and Bischoff storm in and invade freaking Tonight Show. Like, that's how hot wrestling used to be. You could legit do something like this. And as much as everybody will point to a show such as this and talk about how much this is trash, and the event was trash, and we'll talk about how crappy it was for AJ Leno to be wrestling in the main event in the way that he was, because it was, they may also omit that that main event match was nowhere near, nowhere near the worst match on this show. That's WCW. Sprinkle in some, we're going to put Goldberg in the semi-main event spot because him main eventing over the Jay Leno match doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> it had every fucking thing. This is WCW. You start off with Mang and the Barbarian, and they go less than five minutes, and that was kind of rough, and it's like, oh, it's cool to see Haku next. You had Public Enemy versus the Dancing Fools. Fucking Alex Wright, FTW, and Disco Inferno. <laughs> and you have to love as the match is going on, Shivani and Heenan wonder, what the fuck's going on here? Today, too, right? They're on commentary. They're like, what the fuck's going on with this match? Is this a street fight? Why is this allowed to go on? And then just randomly just go announces a few minutes into the match that it's going to be a street fight, and it's a fucking street fight. <laughs> W-C-E-W all fucking day. So you follow up that street fight, with a Ravens rules match with Perry Saturn, excuse me, at the time he was just being called Saturn, forgot about that. Raven and Canyon, <laughs> this was again, nothing to write home about. You just watched the street fight, so let's do another fucking street fight. This sucked. Saturn sucks. Always cool to go back and see Canyon, but also kind of bittersweet too, because you realize he's been long gone, and he was one of the good dudes in wrestling, and it's a shame what ended up happening with him. Um, you also look and you say, hey, one of the cool things about WCW in the 90s, the late 90s especially, was the damn cruiserweight division. And fuck yes, it was. And you would think, you would look at a match between Rey Mysterio and Psychosis, and you would say, that's got to be the hidden gem. That's got to be the secret banger here. No, it wasn't. This match kind of stunk. 
It's not the best I've ever, ever saw even back then from those two guys. And that finish looked brutal. Ray almost looked like he was going to paralyze fucking Psychosis, dropping him on his damn head. Like, that's how much the suck of Sturgis and Road Wild got to these guys. These two cruiserweight legends couldn't even go out there and put on a good match. There was legitimately one decent match on this card. One decent match. And it wasn't this one. The TV title, I had forgotten all the shit about Chavo being fucking crazy like this and Stevie Ray's the TV champion and this was fucking dumb. It was dumb. <laughs> WCW. It was uh, bittersweet. I talk about seeing Canyon as being bittersweet, right? You talk about guys that come over and no matter how much WCW tried to make them matter, it just never really connected. Steve McMichael takes on Brian Adams and... You know, it's a, kind of bittersweet to see Mongo in this spot, knowing the state that he's in with ALS at this stage of his life in 2023. And going back two and a half decades ago, this is a guy, the fucking four, former Four Horsemen member. And there he is, getting a one-on-one -on -one pay per view match. And he's booked to win. Pays to be Bischoff's friend, I guess. But, you know, this was not the worst match on the card. You would think you see Steve McMichael and you say to yourself, worst match on the card. The answer is, no the hell it wasn't. Wasn't even close. <laughs> the Cruiserweight Championship was the best match on this show. They did a really good job throughout the night of building up to this. They were showing clips of Chris Jericho. They were showing, talking about it. Clips of Dean Malenko talking about it. Like they actually told the story leaning into this and you know this was this was this was some good shit between Hoovy and Chris Jericho. Especially with uh freaking the spot at the end where Dean Malenko helps Hoovy. Yeah, this was the best match on the show. Like if you're looking for a match that kind of sorta of holds up, you know, this is the one above all else that holds up. It certainly wasn't the next one, which was the Battle Royal. You got guys like Hall and Nash and freaking Big, the Giant. I almost called him Big Show, the Giant. And there's Goldberg in this schmazza stupidity as the world champion. Little would did you know, like four months later, Kevin Nash was going to be the one to fucking end Goldberg's undefeated streak. And then the next week and whatever hell afterwards, you got the finger poke of two. <laughs> but this is such WCW shit. To sit there and have Goldberg, your undefeated world champion, is not even main eventing. It's fucking outrageous. It's outrageous. But the, the match that this show is ultimately always going to be remembered for is DDP and Jay Leno versus Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. And I know, I think it was Terry Funk, according to Jim Ross, said that the day that um, at Road Wild 98, Jay Leno put the arm bar on Hulk Hogan is the day that the business died. I strongly disagree with that, but I understand Terry's sentiments exactly. I certainly do. But you also have to remember at the time, like, how big of a deal this was. Like, this was being talked about all over on the media. This was being prominently featured on The Tonight Show on a nightly basis, right? You had Leno sitting there shit-talking Hogan. You know, you had Hogan shit-talking Leno. Like, this was amazing stuff, right? And, you know, it, it, it's just, you could lose context there. And you think about the arm bar. I remember that next day, the USA Today front page, the picture was Hulk Hogan doing business for Hulk Hogan, brother. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, dude. He was sitting there and he was being put in our bar by Jay Leno and there's the picture on the freaking front page of the USA Today. Like that's how big of a deal this shit was, right? But of course this pay-per-view didn't do great by rate. They didn't charge any fans to actually get in there. I mean, what the fuck's the point? But the ironic thing is, is when you go back and watch this match, you say, yeah, Leno had no business being in the ring. You really wish it would have been Eubanks because Eubanks might have been able to do something. Remember, he's the one that hit the cutter on freaking Bischoff to help his team help Leno win um, DDP win the match. It should have been Eubanks in the damn match. But you also see Leno, like, he, he kind of gets the concept of, like, working. 
telling stories, utilizing emotions. So was this match like a beautiful ballet? Oh God, no. It was bad. But when you go back and watch it, I was fully expecting to come on here and shit talk the hell out of how terrible this match was. One of the worst matches of all time. But now with the, the sake of time and maybe just it's removed and having more context around things, like this was one of the most entertaining matches on the card, period. The crowd was into it. The dynamics worked. I found myself into it. It wasn't any good from a pure like visual of like what a wrestling match should look like standpoint, but the shit worked, kind of. But you have Jay Leno going over at the main event of a pay-per-view that WCW did a terrible buy rate on and didn't charge anybody admission. Like that's fucking WCW. Hogan finding a way to politic himself into the big feature mainstream storyline, which then puts the world champion Goldberg on a secondary pedestal. That's peak fucking WCW. Starting a match and then a couple minutes in announcing a street fight to then have the next match also be basically a street fight. That's peak WCW. Having Rey Mysterio and Psychosis have a pay-per-view match and have it be one that actually kind of stinks. WCW could do that to you sometimes. Steve McMichael winning a match. I mean, this pay-per-view is fucking WCW in every way, shape, or form. And it's just like I think about with TNA back in the day. The longer I get away from it, the more I find that I miss it. Because it was imperfect. Oh God, was it imperfect. And it was always destined for failure. Just like WCW. But WCW, man, when it was around and even when it had stupid shit like this, it had some redeeming qualities. It certainly did. It had some moments that it would grab you by the set, right? It had the moments that it was clearly better than WWE. And it had those moments that I long for again. I wish any wrestling company today could get the type of mainstream attention that this shit did back in 1998. You know, this is coming off of Hogan and Rodman versus DDP and Malone, right? Like, that type of shit is what we're talking about here. Like, it kind of jumped the shark here a little bit, certainly. But I tell you what, 25 years later... It's got me doing a retro review about it, and it is one of those WCW pay-per-views that you will always remember. You remember Bash at the Beach, 2000. You remember Capital Punishment. You remember WCW Road Wild, 1998.